And, and stop real quick. How big is the, is the $28 million? Like, give us an idea of how big the Dell Jr. business is at this point in the merch game. Like, I need to know what she's asking you to do and, oh. how, and, and what the implications of it, even leaving NASCAR.com, would be from a Dell Jr. standpoint. Does that make sense? It's yeah. easily, easily 40% of the entire $100 million universe, every yeah. bit of it. So she's not yeah. asking you to come up and try yeah. to start up a, a, a license. No, no, no. no, no, no. You, you uh, got the, no, she's asking it, you to come run the licensing of the, the biggest piece of that $28 million that you have. Well, that, that's just e-commerce for me. The yeah. big, oh, that's big, right. That, no, that's, right. Yeah, that's the only bucket. Dale's whole bucket. Um, later, we'll talk about how we got there, and, and the number we did is phenomenal. Okay. And so I came here April 1. I still worked at Turner till June 30th. I just moved World Headquarters up to my office where I am. <laughs> so all along, I'm, I'm running NASCAR.com, and, and we're planning, uh, preparing. And to make this announcement, and Kelly's getting closer, and then you decide on Mr. Hendrick, and you know, decide on AMP and National Guard, and and then we start planning. And I'm literally going out, and, and the more planning I'm doing here to get Dale Jr.'s big announcement ready, it's helping NASCAR.com. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be their biggest day ever, <laughs> too, as well. It's going to be everyone's biggest day. So we were really, really ahead of the game. I mean, and, and Hendrick had the paint schemes and the sponsors were ahead of the game. And when we announced, was it September you announced it? Yeah. Uh, when I, was it? We announced in May that we were leaving. leaving. Yeah. I'm and then I thought it was late June yeah. that it, we, about a month later, okay. that we announced that. And this, then in August is when we announced to the world the sponsors, okay. the everything. Yeah. 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 Like in June, we didn't have the sponsorship lined up and all that yeah. at that point. That's yeah. right. Yeah. So, and to be clear, I mean, this we, we kind of go through this timeline pretty quickly. But the fact of the matter is, because this also was my first yes, year with exactly. you guys. So Joe and I came at about the same time. But... We, we did announce that we were leaving DEI, I want to say April, May. Yeah. And that was a, I mean, that had ripple effects all over the place, right? That was huge news. We did the press conference right here at Junior Motorsports. The next month and a half, we were basically secret about the conversations. We knew that the only real meaningful conversations were happening with Rick Hendrick. It, you and Dale went to Joe Gibbs. Those stories yeah. are well documented. Everybody assumes he's going to go to RCR. Yeah. But then I remember in the weeks leading up, and Joe, this is going to come back to you here. Uh, nobody knew where we were going. In fact, I remember Jeff Hammond saying on the Fox pre-race show, like the week before or maybe a few days before we were going to announce where Dale was going, they had him going to Gibbs with like Visa or MasterCard or something as a sponsor. And we kind of chuckled about that. And then another report came out, I think, either through Yahoo or something, where it says, no, no, Dale Jr. is going to start his own cup team. And Martin Truex is coming yeah. over here to run yeah. with Dale. And so we and so all these reports were coming out just hours and days before our announcement. So it was well preserved. My point on this would be you're having to or my, I guess, Joe, my question to you is, did you know where Dale was going at that point? I mean, Kelly kept me up to speed, and where we can, we gather as much information. No one going to Hendrick's good. No one is 88. You can build licensing programs around that, and then you add in the sponsor. So we were building, and we were preparing for the breadth of product to go out when we made the announcement. When, I can't imagine exactly when I knew um, – but it, it was timing enough because we went and um, and here in Concord, I burned screens and uh, everyone wanted to know where he's going. And I had people printing in all over different places of the country. And that morning, that night, I FedExed out and I just said, get your presses ready. Have a green shirt, have a, a, a white shirt, black shirt. Um, here's I'll be sending you screens for these in the morning. And they said, what is it? I said, you'll get them in the morning. <laughs> I mean, we didn't want anyone to know about it. And um, when they got there in the morning, um, the announcement's coming at 9 or 10. They open up the box and they start printing because we wanted to immediately yeah. ship yeah. as many places. The goal was, and it goes back to our philosophy, we cast a real wide net to every e-commerce partner, every retailer that wanted the product. We It was built up and, and certainly... Back to you, who's number one. Dale Jr. was number one. So the demand was there. Now, we had to worry about that number eight Budweiser 
too, because it wasn't just building to him. Oh, that's right. He's still ra- he's got to finish the He's Still racing. Yeah, right? and and you end up paying Budweiser a quarter million dollars, um, to have the rights to ship product before the end of the year. I mean, so to to respectfully, it's Budweiser. Um, respectfully, you know, you have this contract, and you can't just go out. Now, if you go out with the eight eighty eight Hendrick, fine, but with the sponsors and all that. So you look at your forecast and, you know, is it worth a quarter million? Is well worth a quarter million. Uh, but you still had to negotiate with mm-hmm. Budweiser and, and prepay a quarter million dollars. Yeah. On the same token with that, you know, just thinking through, thank goodness, you know, the the means of information like we have today were not available, <laughs> you know, not uh, sizable in 2007 and eight in terms of social media and, and all of those things. Because in the same breath, we um, we kept so much undercover, we even had to – Figure out the number. Which number? We worked with Yates, you know, in terms of getting the 88. I mean, you know, it was some very um, thoughtful conversation, thoughtful discussions and conversations um, internally on how we transferred everything to the Hendrick Motorsports in preserving the legacy of the car numbers and, and what we had built from an Earnhardt standpoint, you know, so, yeah. so getting that number, you know, which we, we ended up, um, you know, purchasing from, yeah. from the but to your point, everybody up to the last minute had different guesses, <laughs> but so much work went and all the touch points and there was only a certain amount of people. I yeah. licensed there was only a certain amount of people. Like I, I trust this with your life. And I, and I went to those, um, and and because you can't do it on your own, you have to execute a program of that magnitude, and and truly have shock and awe. You're going to have to trust somebody. I think that's what I want the listener to really understand is that something of this magnitude, and the and you to have a prepared licensing game and a merch ready to go. It is unthinkable that the secret was preserved or it, the yes. announcement was preserved. Yeah. I mean, everybody kind of knows that, you know. Leaks usually happen when you're sharing paint schemes with a, you know, die cast manufacturer. So they, you know, that's how Jayski used to always get the exactly. announcements and the rumors and things. And I just, uh, something of this scale, people were literally in the dark on and you were made the, the mechanism, the machine that was the merch, the Dale Jr. merch was able to operate under some cloak of secrecy and that one person some distributor and who knows where, some some printer or whatever, one person leaking that out unravels the whole thing. Yeah. Well, the credibility comes back to in 95 I, when I ran Dale's company and I built rapports. And then even even all the way through with NASCAR.com Superstore, you built, you built trust and you know who you can line up on the line of scrimmage with and you don't have to look left or right. Mm. And you also know who you don't trust. More importantly, you you know, your your handful, you know, you get past your five fingers, the trust level goes down. So I had to lean on those partners, and um, and, and and even till today, we in in April 29, two ten, we ran the Wrangler car, yeah. another shock and awe. Well, and we, it, we, I mean, there's times we've done things that has always been, um, you know, the right way. Yeah. The, and 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 when when we announce it, the merchandise is there, and we're ready to go. But you guys would recall this: there there actually was uh, anxiety behind this announcement. Certainly, leaving DEI, I'm curious if you had the same anxiety that we had because I know that Dale Jr. leaving the family business is. We weren't sure how his fans were going to react to that, and we certainly didn't know. If the reception to him going to Hendrick, Hendrick. Motorsports, <laughs> the team of Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson, basically the evil empire, the ones that we go fight and race against every week, you know, they're they they're not Dell Jr. They're they're starch. They're 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 polished. We're jeans and t-shirts. And so was there a concern from the merchandising uh industry in your lane of could this backfire? Could all of the things that have been built up since 2000 when he was a rookie unravel just by this announcement? The power of the Earnhardt brand and the history behind it and the licensees and the retailers, the need to believe 
because he's leaving Budweiser and he's leaving DEI. And, and the need to have Dale still be a vital part of the sport because without him, it's just a big hole. And I think it was, um, yeah, I'm sure there was anxiety. I sold it as this is going to be big. I mean, that's my job. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and you better get in line. And if you don't, you're going you're gonna to miss an opportunity to get healthy. A lot of times the industry goes up and down. And when we did these big things, you're helping the whole industry. Yeah, are we the benefactor of helping people get healthy? That's okay. You, you want the industry to be healthy. And we sold it in as we all need this and we all need to work. And if you don't get in front and you don't prepare for it and you don't put your orders in now, you're going you're gonna to regret it. And the power of that Earnhardt brand, um, you know, hope's not a strategy. Hope was a strategy for a lot of, <laughs> for a lot of people there. Um, but I'm sure there was anxiety. I don't. I look back on it. I mean, I'm like, this is perfect. This is you know, this is the the big juice. This is the big game, and and you're just t having conversations and you're lining things up. And every day you can't wait to go do more. You know, how big is this going to be? And how big it ended up being? We went back and we're talking to Kelly up front. What are our goals and our objectives? Who who we going now that we're taking over and, and we are going to you know. Julie Motorsports Licensing is going to go out and build a better mousetrap and, and be the leader of the industry. What are some of our goals and what are some of our ambitions? One of them we wrote on the top was we're going to um, um, give contracts out and not burden people with guarantees that aren't attainable. The whole problem with Motorsports Authentics and Action Performance is they, they overestimated what they could produce and, and they had massive unpaid minimum guarantees, and, and, and to try to make payment on them, you just build product hoping someone buys them, then you have excess inventory, and then you have unpaid guarantees and you lose money on inventory and, and your balance sheet looks disastrous. So goal one was, um, well, top three was, you know, find partners, forecast what's fair, and have them build a product and have them get behind it. So th when I got done that year, and we get back into the end of the year, in 2008, what was the big hit you asked about after um, the Olympic car? There was $20 million of guarantees that year. That is phenomenal. That is, yeah, so significant. That, that was a big, big, and, and like think about the people who paid it. That And 96% of the money we received was earned. So I didn't hit my 100%, but we were close. So we were fair. It's good to be fair. And, and everyone had a bite. And if implicitly you take the guarantee, everyone who paid me the guarantee and based on their royalty rate, that, re, that transferred to $270 million in 2008. In retail. In retail. Right. Wow. <laughs> $270 million. Today. Wow. Today. We sit here in 2023. The entire NASCAR industry, maybe $100 million. Wow. Yeah. That was the biggest of the big licks. Massive. I'm yeah. a, and that was, let, and that let me was, make sure I'm understanding this right. You're saying that the Dale Jr. announcement, like the 2007 year and, uh, and all that came with it, the, the new sponsors, AMP, National Guard, the T-shirts, the, the merch that you created with the new 88, new yeah. number, everything. At the end, in 2008, which would have been Dale Jr.'s first season with Hendrick, mm -hmm. when all the financials are coming in the end uh, and, and your numbers are, are, are you know solid, $270 million program. At, at retail. And that's from sales on January 1 through December 31st. Yep. So you're talking track side, e-commerce, yeah. mass market, you know, retail, yeah, diecast, yeah, Lionel, yeah. all the licensees. That was the last of the big hits. How did that compare to Dale Earnhardt's 95 uh, stuff? I mean, I... I, 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 I sorry, Dale Earnhardt Sr. He spanked you. <laughs> wow! <laughs> yeah. yeah, he spanked him. Yeah. That's a... Yeah. Dale Jr.'s P1. And if you ever and if you ever tell someone, if you look at it and that make now over the course of life and, and significance of licensing and sport. Yeah, he might be P2. Yeah, they're pretty close. <laughs> I, I know who P1 and I know who P2 is. Yeah. What were yeah. you thinking, Kelly? This this is amazing. I mean, I can't, I've never heard that number. You know, I um I was thinking as as you were asking the question of Joe and thinking, you know, one of one of the very important things that's been really important to Joe throughout his career is that licensing always has a seat at the table in terms of the whole business picture of a, a race team and a race car driver. And I think what 
went well is that the thought process of those of us thinking through what you said, we're leaving the family company, we're not going to RCR, we're going to Hendrick, our nemesis and competitor, all of those things we thought through really well and the timing of those announcements and the timing of how we did things and the stories, you know, the, the storytelling, which was factual storytelling, you know, I mean, I, you, we, we, it probably would have never worked had we not had that um, personal connection with Mr. Hendrick through our grandfather and through those things, right? It probably would have not worked. Um, but the fact that we, you know, were careful in that storytelling, I think really, and that's what Joe needed for licensing to be successful, yeah, right? Exactly. I mean, that's really you what you needed. You had the napkin yeah. contract yeah, you, story. Yeah, exactly. You had the Robert G. connection. Yes, exactly. And so that this is exactly. as much a family. It's just the maternal side. Exactly. But yeah. it was, I mean, you know, um, for me, because I had been in the business, I'd seen these things and all of that kind of stuff. Um, I mean, I, you know, pleased as could be. But I think the person that was just blown over was Mr. Hendrick himself. Oh. He had never seen that no. kind of power in licensing. You remember what he did to thank us? He, he calls, I, I probably he, will after he, you tell he me calls the story. Up, <laughs> he calls up you, and he wants to take the team to dinner. And he picks oh, yeah. Monica and Wendy and everyone up in the limo. And he takes us, I guess, Capitol Grill. And he just wanted to meet the people that were and thank, responsible, and, which is that's <laughs> yeah. such the character of Mr. Hendrick, because that check, I mean, it's a butter knife. It was if, significant. If, if, if there's a dollar, Mr. H got fifty cents, and Dale got fifty cents. Yeah. So they had never seen that impact, you know, from yeah. how licensing impacted the race team well, and the revenue. And it's a testimonial to a couple of things. And there's one thing else I need, and I want to go two points here. I needed time. Yeah. And you and went you out, and, and you were going out in, in, in January of 07, and you were thought You talked to me in 96 uh, of this, you know, what your concept was in, yeah. in, in 07. Yep. You know, to do these, yeah, 2006, yeah. not 96 yet. <laughs> um, to do these things, yeah, it, yeah, it's nice. You still need time. And today we don't, people either make different decisions. Without time, it doesn't work. Right. And, and the second thing is, as you went to Mr. Hendrick, said, hey, we're willing to do this and that, but we want to control our rights. Well, you just validate, validate it. Why? Yes. The, the, that check is why. Oh, that is so interesting that you say that because it just occurs to me, and I know that this is common knowledge, but it's worth repeating. That was the whole situation at DEI, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Dale didn't yeah, own absolutely. his rights. For the longest time, you were the one fighting – Behind the scenes, it did become public as Dale Jr. You know, started <laughs> Does, making right. it public. Yeah. But Dale didn't have the rights to his own name. So if he had sold just as much inventory as he did at the Hendrick announcement in that 2007, he doesn't get a, he doesn't get nearly any uh, uh, the, the number that he gets based off of what he would have deserved. Yeah, and I think you know even even further to that is that we had a situation at Hendrick Motorsports that we didn't have at Dillon Horn Incorporated and which was one of, you know, the many reasons that we wanted to move along is just that relationship to be fair, what Joe said, to be fair, to share, to, you know, to to enjoy everything that comes of it together, right? It was very one-sided. And um, not only if you did work out some kind of mechanism where, you had some kind of revenue share. Sometimes we didn't ever get paid. You know, we went oh we went goodness. twelve and eighteen months on trying to get paid on things and and so on and so forth. So you know, the it was a totally different situation, um, and you felt appreciated and valued. And and uh, I, I I definitely recall Mr. Hendricks. You know, just elation in terms. I mean, he just could not believe. That, yeah, that that, was, that awesome. was where we was. Yeah. That that's where we were. Was, yeah. was Mr. Hendrick receptive <laughs> to that idea of you guys owning that yeah, piece absolutely. of it from the beginning? Like, was that even did that require negotiation? Not at all. Nope. Wow. And and I, you know, the the document that um, that I you know received help from Stoke Codwell, who um, who Joe mentioned as well, our attorney at the time. You know, we had worked with Stoke through the Dellen Hart Incorporated days, and then you know. We sat down and just really went. And like I said, it was three pages of information. It was probably 18 bullet points on there. 
<clears throat> and Mr. Hendrick laughs because, you know, there were some very serious things on there, like controlling our licensing. Um, and then there were some funny things on there, like, I need to take your helicopter to Martinsville, Charlotte, and Darlington, you know. And, and Mr. Hendrick always laughs about that. He's like, you guys came in there, and you had all these things that you wanted to do, and then you needed the helicopter. Like, really? <laughs> 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 but, you know, that was – that, and, and I didn't waver on that. That document was sent to the three teams we talked to, if you want to speak to us about Dale coming to drive here, you need to know that this is what we're asking and this is what we're going to be, you know, requiring as a part of the relationship. And it was really never a, it was never a negotiation point with, with really anybody. Wow. <laughs> I, that was fun. That, you what, you that don't have that fun. kind of leverage these days at all. No. <laughs> yeah. We had a lot of leverage. Hey, if you like that video, like and comment below. And don't forget to subscribe so you'll never miss another piece of Dirty Mo Media content.